stupid idea. I want to take all five of my cars and try and line them up to take a photo. Now, that might sound a little bit more simple than it actually is because this is a multi-story underground underneath my apartment building in London where my cars are basically all dotted around in different places. So the GT8 has just got back here from Autosport. That's right here. Up at the other end over there is the 675LT Spider. The Ford Focus RS is half a level down behind us. The Ferrari FF and the Classic Mini are both down in the depths. Now to do this, I've basically got to borrow other people's spaces, so I'm doing it in the night just so I can line them and move them around without affecting or annoying anybody else. Um, and basically get all the cars together because it is quite ridiculous having everything in one place and I think it would be quite cool and make for a nice photo or two. So that is my objective, to try and move everything. I've not previously taken the GT8 down into the depths of the garage at all, so I've removed the front splitter as you might have seen on the previous video, which should make it a little bit easier to get it down these ramps um, and around down into the garage. I've already been down to scope out where I'm going to aim to go to do this, um, to decide you know, how I'm going to line up the cars and try and make it work as efficiently as possible. And then hopefully I can take quite a cool shot. And I also want to show you the car keys because I think I have a pretty nice like pile of car keys when I put them all together right now too. The only previous time to now that I've ever had five cars in one place was back in August when it was the GT4 instead of the GT8 and that was really brief. That was about half an hour so I did it in a rush, shoved all the cars down somewhere, got some photos, then loaded three of them up to send them over to the Nürburgring to ring garage. So today I've got a, well, tonight I should say, I've got a little bit more time on my side and I'm going to start with the GT8. So I'm going to take this downstairs so that means startup number one is going to be in the Aston. First up, we have the ECU, the emotional control unit. This is kind of really nice glass key for the Aston. So, hopefully this will cold start. I've been driving the car, so it might be a little bit warm. But if it is a cold start, it will sound incredible. There we go, you get the kind of whip snap. Let's go get the McLaren. This one I keep tucked in this ridiculously tight and tiny space. And this comes up time and time again. But yes, I can get it in. It's not a problem because obviously it's right-hand drive. Um, but I like the car being here because it's easier to get out. And the key is the rather lovely cerulean blue carbon. That's actually the key cover that I obviously kept from my LT Coupe. Um, but I still use this for the Spider. Double press to pop open the doors. We can step in, so this car's only a couple of months older than the Aston, but it's done a fair few miles more. Let's fire it up. The rumble. Okay, so let's try and get this down. Um, the difficulty with the LT is that I can't really tell where the back wheels are, and I don't want to curve them as I go down those ramps. So we will take this very carefully and see if we can get it down. and not actually the first time these two cars have sat next to each other. They did once just before I took sort of official delivery of the GT8, but they look very nice. And no, I know I've taken up two spaces, but they are very, very narrow, as you can see from how the GT8 is parked up to the line, but almost on the wall as well. I'm just gonna do this for photos um, and hopefully not get in anybody's way. But next, I'm gonna park the Focus RS just beyond that pillar. And it looks here in the corner. So this is, I guess the easiest one, keyless. I should get the key out of my pocket though, just to show you. I have it in a, uh, a nitrous blue key case, just for fun, paint match to the car. Um, but just touch in there, in we jump. This is the stock exhaust at the moment, but I suspect I'm gonna be changing it soon. But we did do the Mountune FPM 375 package. So you can't really hear it, but there's a bit more intake noise going on from in front of us. This is going to go and join the crew over there. Three down, and the focus was a little bit funny because it's parked right next to the wall, which meant I had to climb through to get out. But next, 
is going to be the Mini, which is kind of a traditional, normal, excessive pile of keys, but with a very nice keychain that was sent to me. I'm just going to show you quickly. I like that a lot. It goes well with the car. So, the Mini in British Racing Green is going to be the next one to join the party, and I haven't at this moment driven it too much in uh, the last couple of weeks. So, fingers crossed, this goes um, without a hitch. Key in. The manual fun way of opening and getting in. Even the tiny car, there's actually somebody who parks next to me with quite a large SUV, so I like to um, park it quite nice and tight into the wall. Uh, then we've got the immobilizer. And if I put the key in, let's hope it starts up. That is the sound of failure. So I'm going to skip the Mini and go over and take the Ferrari. Meanwhile, we'll get some jump leads and try and jump the Mini off the Focus RS because the Ferrari's battery alone is a little bit dodgy to jump and I don't really fancy trying to jump a tiny engine like this off a V12. Ferrari's just there, by the way. Um, and then we'll come back to this. So Mini is going to be done last, after all. As I fumble around in my pocket then, the Ferrari key, the traditional key, but painted to match in Le Mans Blue. And I don't normally use this car to drive because I'm scared of getting it scratched because it took a lot of work to get that painted um, to match the car. But this I drove yesterday, so the battery should be completely fine, one would hope. And we're going to get the noise of a 660 horsepower V12 coming into life, which is always a lovely sound. Well, it took its time. That's the parking sensors, by the way, because we're next to the wall. But I'm just going to come round to the back, give it a moment to warm up. That sound is heavenly. I mean, between this and the GT8, they're both pretty darn good. Everything's plugged in, we've kind of wedged the Focus RS in, but all the cables are plugged in. So in theory, start this, give it a little bit of revs, the battery for the Mini is awkwardly there in the loops. Uh, it's all started up, let's give it a go! Let us jump back in here then, and give Mini attempt number two! Let's see if we can start it, the immobilizer's on, that's a good thing I guess. Fingers crossed. Keys in. And we're in. We're in live. Okay. Let's keep it running. Disconnect all the cables and then take the cars upstairs. We are done! The whole fleet lined up behind me, not necessarily in any specific order whatsoever. I've kind of messed up, actually, my number plates, where we have SH15, SH12, SH13, then 87TB, and then SH10. So we'll have to ignore that for a moment. If you're wondering for the future, I've got SH16 MEE for the AMG GTR and SH66 MEE because of 1966 for my Ford GT when that arrives. Neither of which, by the way, are intending to replace any of this lot. But for me, this is a massive pinch moment because this is so, so awesome. I mean, these two both bought new from factories, spec'd exactly how I wanted them. The Orion purple paint, with my good old sparkles in blue, which doesn't really come out on the camera, but looks amazing in the sunshine. And then we went to Dub Customs to add the silver pinstripes to kind of accentuate against the silver wheels. The GT8, cobalt blue with the orange accent pack, and then some Q options with the grill and the mirrors and the wing. So we kind of got like ridiculously fast, elegant style. We've got in your face, manual fun driver's car. We've got the daily in the Focus RS, nitrous blue, with the bucket seats, again manual. I've actually got the three manuals here. Manual, 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 seven speed double clutches at the ends. Then we've got the classic Mini in the British Racing Green with the silver stripes, the silver roof and mirrors. Um, that's basically for bumbling around town. 
Then we have the sort of, I guess, the baller mobile, the Ferrari FF. A car I'm going to shoot an interesting piece on actually in the couple of coming days because this thing is basically second to none for what it does. Elegantly cruising with four friends, a massive V12, a lot of fun. Yet when you're on a twisty road, it opens up and it's just fantastic. So there we go, the Schmi fleet for the start of 2017, all lined up in a row here in my garage in the night so as not to annoy anyone. Um, this is quite cool right now. I'm sort of kind of enjoying walking by. Um, it's quite ridiculous. Let me come to the roof. Let's pick a car, the Focus, because the roof is wrapped. And let me get out the various keys. So we've got the crystal key for the Aston. We've got the MSO key for the McLaren. And we've got the Le Mans Blue Ferrari key searching my pockets here. We've got the nitrous blue of the Focus RS key. And finally, somewhere here in my pocket, we have the mini key. So there we go, the whole fleet in one. Let me see if I can position this nicely. Didn't really do a very good job of that, but that's it, that's the lot. Those are the keys for the various cars. And yeah, quite a moment, quite a lot of fun even if that was a pain, jump starting cars and things. But that's what happens when you don't use them too often. Just doing my best to avoid it wherever I can. Anyway, I really wanted to pull this off, to line them all up, and now I can say I've done it. It looks really cool. I'm going to take some photos before we put them all back. I'm not going to film the entire de-rig process because it took a little bit longer than uh, we would have liked. It's been about an hour actually to set all of this up, which is why I needed to make sure I did it at the right kind of time. But I could get away with it, but it's pretty cool. So I really want to say a massive thanks to all of you, because if you weren't watching these videos, this wouldn't be possible for me. And this is quite literally my dream. Um, and there is nothing more fun than being able to share this with you and share the experiences like the road to GT8, the road trips in the various cars, doing some tuning on the Focus RS, the classic adventures that I'll hopefully do in the Mini, using the FF for road trips as it should be done. It's doing loads of miles and the fun stuff I can get up to in the track days and all that kind of stuff. So I hope you're enjoying the videos. I think there's a lot to come this year. This is a pretty good way to really kick start it for me. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to taking some pics now, but thank you very much for watching. Thanks to my friend who helped me out with this for being very patient. And I will catch up with you again very soon. Cheers. <laughs>